In this video, we can see the 08 rema being manually negotiated to one millimeter beyond the apical measurement. Normally, it would be one millimeter beyond the constriction, but for the sake of making a point, we wanted you to see the extension beyond the apical terminus. Going long would only increase the chances of apical distortion and instrument separation. By neither of these things happening, we want to emphasize the safety and robustness of the system. Please note how the manually driven 08 reamer is used with watch winding while also incorporating an up and down motion. Once patency is attained with the 08 reamer, the measurement of the canal is taken and the 10 reamer is used in the 30 degree reciprocating handpiece to the same length as the 08 reamer. Note the bend in the reamer that has recorded the curvature of the canal. We now use the 15 relieve reamer in the reciprocating hand piece, consistently going one millimeter beyond the apex. Again, the curve is recorded in the bend of the reamer. The 20 relieve reamer is now taken one millimeter beyond the apex. This is followed by the tapered piezo six millimeters short of the apex. Please note how even rotary instruments designed to bring debris coronally can drive a small amount apically. I purposely irrigated too aggressively, allowing fluid to escape apically, something that can happen if you apply too much hand pressure to the syringe. Never apply more hand pressure than required for about five to six drops per second. Never have a stream of liquid. We then pull back one millimeter when using the 30 relieved reamer. We again check our patency with the 25 relieved reamer, the last instrument that went beyond the apex. This is followed by the 35 relieved reamer. The 25 once again confirms patency. Please note that at no point has an observable distortion taken place. The 40 is taken back in an additional millimeter unless the canal is so wide it goes to measurement without any significant resistance. The canal continues to be irrigated between instruments. The final shaping is done with a 2506 Nitai reamer, again used in the 30 degree reciprocating handpiece. It too is taken one millimeter beyond length. No harm is done because the canal has already been open to this diameter. All that the 2506 imparts is a greater taper in the middle and apical thirds of the canal. The canal is dried, the medium gutter percha pointed, adjusted for a tight apical fit with tug back. The cement is now applied using the bi-directional spiral, three millimeters short of the apex, loaded like a corn dog and applied with six to seven strokes. This step is done twice. Note that despite the vigorous pumping of cement, no cement is driven over the apex with the applicator. The master point is then liberally coated with cement and placed into the canal. At this time, and if an intact periodontal ligament is not present, some cement will go over the apex, which causes no post-op symptoms and will generally resolve in three to six months. Please note, as also seen on x-ray, the obturation of a lateral canal, as well as the main canal, and what appears to be distortion-free shaping. Also note how fully the canals are instrumented, assuring a high degree of canal cleanliness from both mechanical and chemical means. The x-rays show the curved canals before shaping, with the fitted point, and final obturation.